We'll start our post lunch session with Edwin James. It gives me great pleasure to introduce him to you. Uh, I think most of you have seen him in uh, the worship in APC. Uh, he's very often with his guitar, making sure we are um, mesmerized by heavenly music. Uh, he's the principal customer success manager at LinkedIn and has 14 years of experience dedicated to customer su success. His role involves guiding some of the largest global companies to harness LinkedIn's potential in meeting their talent acquisition and business objectives. Networking with purpose and harnessing social media to connect, share, and serve is his forte. Eddie helps his clients embrace digital transformation and leverage LinkedIn's powerful solutions to attract, engage, and hire the best talent. Uh, so after physically meeting with new people today, he will lead us into uh, connecting online on LinkedIn. But before that, he's going to jumpstart the session with a uh, little quiz. Edwin. Thank you, Tina. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good to see you all today, good to be here. And, and again, what a powerful initial start by Rajiv followed by Deepa, phenomenal. I mean, it just helped us connect some of those missing pieces, so thank you so much for doing that. So, how are you all feeling after lunch? <laughs> Sleepy, that's honest. <laughs> thank you, Shika. Sorry? Not as of now. Not as of now, okay. Any, any other comments? After lunch, how are you all feeling? Good? Hanging in there? Okay, we'll try and make it as interactive as it can be. I'm missing the guitar for sure. I feel something is missing. I usually hide behind the guitar, but uh, it's a different uh, opportunity. Again, what we'll try and do is we'll try and interact with each other as much as we can. It's not gonna be a one-sided kind of a thing. We're gonna do a lot more activity. So what I'm going to ask you all to do is take your phones. You might have heard this in the past. People say, put your phones in silent mode. I'm not going to ask you all to do that, but keep your phones handy. Okay, everybody, take out your phones, lift it up. If you have probably a Vodafone connection, God bless you all. <laughs> Just... Okay, we're going to do something fun. Um, I'm, sh I'm going to switch my screen. We're going to play a quick quiz. So how many of you all love quiz? Questions? What kind of questions? Just bear with me. Go to your internet browser, open that up. I'll get Monica to help me. Monica, if you could come here. Oh, great. I think, yeah, we're good, we're good. Okay, now what I would want you all to do is, if you're tech savvy, open your QR code scanner, scan that if you can. But if you can't scan that, that's okay. Go to kahoot.it, okay? Go to your browser and type in kahoot.it, and then it'll ask you to enter a game pin. So you need to enter that game pin that you see. 8710435. Okay? Like I said, Vodafone, it's going to be challenging for you all. Ah, there we go. So, for those of you all who probably ha are probably seeing this for the very first time, Kahoot is a fun app. So, you'll have questions pop up on screen. Then, you'll have options that will show up on your phone or whatever device you're using to log in. And then, you need to, you need to select the right answer. It's not just that, but you need to center, also select the right answer quickly. Okay? Wow. We have a lot of members already. We'll wait for another two more minutes. We have about 63 members on this already. You don't want to miss this because the person who's going to probably take the podium is going to get something special from me in the end. And if the f there are folks online, I hope you're already on kahoot.it and then log into the game pin. Okay, I'll wait for 60 more seconds and you're going to hear from me.
some interesting uh, nicknames there. Faith Warrior. <laughs> DSR. The Rock. Jarvis. Sharp Nose. <laughs> Very creative. Okay, 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds. We have 102 folks who are on this already. A lot on there sounds like some hacker names, right? Okay, 10 more seconds, 10 more seconds. Okay. Great, for, so for those of you already on this, again, let me refresh you all again. So it's a fun app. You're gonna have questions pop up on screen. You need to use your device or whatever device you use to log in. You'll have options there. You need to select the right one. It's not about selecting the right one. It's also about selecting the right one quickly. So make sure, that's why I said Vodafone folks, it's quite difficult. You know, net connectivity is quite bad. <laughs> But anyway, 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 let's, let's get started. So what are we going to be talking about? What are we going to be quizzing you all about? Yes, no um, obvious choice is LinkedIn. We're going to be talking about LinkedIn, but we're going to learn along the way. But also, there's a surprise element. I'm going to be asking you all questions about APC. How many of you all attend APC? Hands up, hands up, hands up. OK, how many of you all don't attend APC? Uh, from outside, our guests. Lovely. Round of applause for all the guests here. Delighted to have you all today. Okay, so here we go. The first question, a very difficult one. Today's date. So, yeah, so this will help you connect the dots. So, you need to look at the option on your phone and select the right one. What's today's date? Yeah, yeah, shh. Don't spill out what the answer is. It's a tough one. Nice to see 106 of you all getting it right. And some of you all, I. Okay, let's blame it on the network. <laughs> okay, let's, let's see who's the podium. Okay, we have. Amazing, amazing, okay, lovely. So you all get the hang of it, right? Okay, now let's get into the serious stuff. LinkedIn has how many members globally? Eight hundred million, two hundred million, five hundred million, or one billion? And the right answer is 1 billion, so recently. And nice to see most of you are getting it right, yes. So there are about, literally about five new members every second who's adding, who's been added to the platform. So you can imagine by the end of today, there'll be so many more new members on the platform. So what's amazing is the more the members are, it becomes better for us, right? We have a lot more opportunity to network, connect, and get to know people. Let's look at the leaderboard. Ah, Swarnima. Okay, third one. How many members are in APAC? Okay, at least our side of the world. <laughs> That's a good one. I should have included that view. In Asia Pacific, what's like the member count here? Ah, blind guessing, and again, I'm happy to see most of you are getting it right. Yes, about 190 million. Now, the best part is we're living in that side of the world where the member count... Ah, so sorry about that. But the best part about that is it's amazing to see that as a region, we're growing. So, which means India's got a lot of potential to tap into. So, let's look at the leaderboard again. Starting my very strong. I hope you didn't like look into my laptop. 
Okay, Dash people visit LinkedIn jobs every week. How many people visit LinkedIn jobs every week? Now, LinkedIn is used for many reasons, right? People network, connect, look for jobs, look for probably promoting content. The right answer is about 62 million members. That's a lot of people looking for jobs, right? So again, it's a platform predominantly known. A lot of people, you know, think about LinkedIn the moment you're looking for a change. That's when you probably reach out to your friend and say, hey, can you give me a recommendation? Clean up my profile a little bit. But I'm going to talk to you all about it's an ongoing thing about how you need to represent yourself on the platform. Very strong on top. Three more to go. Ha, huh, this is close to home. When did APC's journey begin? And, and again, I uh, want to tell you all this is not APAC, APC. So. And pardon the language there, I think there's a small little letter. When did it begin? Ah, nice to see. Most of you are getting it right, yes. It was February 18th, 2001. And then there's a new leaderboard, person on the leaderboard, KJ. Two more to go. APC hash dash churches in Bangalore. How many locations or churches in Bangalore? Come on, y'all can't get this wrong. Nice to see most of you are getting it right again. A round of applause to yourselves. Give yourselves a good round of applause. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, we have a lot of locations in Bangalore. KJ leading the way. I think we have just two more to go. Again, about APC. Again, I'm part of the worship team. I can't miss this. I need to promote the song as well. APC's new release song and the album uh, that we're titling God of Breakthrough, Volume 1 featured this song. Which song? And these are APC songs, by the way. If you didn't get a chance to listen to it, try and listen to it on your way back home. But which song was featured on this album? Ah, fantastic. So, looks like you all have been listening to APC songs. So, fantastic. And for the other members, I think 20-odd members, you know, there's a small little homework for you all. Get that link. All right, the last one on screen. You never know how things can change. We have Mikasa leading the way, followed by KJ and The Rock in third place. Ha, huh, back to LinkedIn. By adding in a profile picture, your profile views go up by 9x, 21x, 5x, or 16x. Again, I mean, some of you all might be wondering, like, I mean, if I add a picture, how does it make a difference? But it does. All right, the right answer is 21x. Yes, by adding in a picture on your LinkedIn profile, your profile views go up by 21x. So let's look at the leaderboard. In third place, we have Shika. In second place, Mikasa was leading the way. Let's see who's right on top. KJ, who's KJ? Who's KJ? Congratulations, and then runners up, we have there. So KJ, I, I'm, there's going to be something special from my end that would come your way. So again, a round of applause, everyone. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is, again, it's going to, we're going to shift gears. We're going to be in that workshop mode, okay? So look, look at your neighbor and say workshop. Get ready for the workshop. <laughs> One more time, workshop. workshop. Okay, great. So if your neighbor's like tired after the biryani, so you know what you need to do, just nudge them. But I'm going to be talking about something very, very important right now. Yes, the larger focus today is going to be on your own profile to tell your story and build your network. But we're going to talk about something very important. 
I mean, yes, we're going to talk about donuts. It's a very sensitive topic. How many of you all love donuts? I should have had this session before lunch, and I'm sure everybody's going to be thinking about donuts. Okay, I'm going to just pick, pick some random person here. Okay, let me see who's like, who's giving me eye contact. Like, <laughs> oh, whom do I know? Rebecca. <laughs> Rebecca, okay. Rebecca, what's your favorite donut? Chocolate donut. Anybody else can beat that? Shika. Clay cinnamon. Boston cream, lovely. What about the back row, folks? Are very quiet. Come on. Anybody from there? Favorite donut? Come on, don't tell me all are like avoiding sugar. Original glaze. Okay, I love the custard filled ones. But anyway, I'm going to talk about donuts. But I'm sure you all got an idea of what LinkedIn is. Some sort of way, right? Like, yeah, LinkedIn is one of the world's largest professionals network. Now, there are other social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, WhatsApp. All these are other social media platforms. So let's take a look at Donut in the way it would be positioned on other social media platforms. So on Facebook, you'll say, I like a Donut. On Instagram, here's a cool photo of a Donut. Spotify, anybody listening to Donuts? And WhatsApp is more personal, right? So probably nudge others and say, hey, do you want to have a donut and so on. Right? You got an idea of how donut is positioned on a few other social media platforms? Now let's take donut and let's take donut and move it onto LinkedIn to see how donut would be positioned. You say, I hope to op you know, probably operate a donut franchisee. Here are recommendations for my former donut colleagues. Here are my skills making donuts. I'm looking for a job in a donut company. You saw the way immediately, the way we positioned Donut changed on LinkedIn. Now, what I'm going to ask you all to do is imagine with me, and I'm sure some of you all are exposed to at least one form of social media, right? Now, have that picture. Imagine the kind of things that you probably pushed out on the, pl on the platform. And now when we look at LinkedIn, the way we position ourselves on the platform changes. So we're going to be spending simple tactical pieces that we're going to be focusing on that will amp our own profile. So for those of you all who probably haven't been on LinkedIn, it's a very simple platform. You go to linkedin.com and you can sign up there for absolutely free, of course. And for those of you all already there, I'm presuming most of you all are already in one form or the other, we're going to look at simple ways to amp our profile. Now, there are many reasons why we should be looking at this is the mission, mission statement for our company. It's all about connecting people with opportunities and making them more productive and successful. And I resonate with that mission statement very strongly. And that's one of the reasons why I'm still working at LinkedIn. And our vision is to connect global opportunities to people with the global workforce. So again, that's close to my heart, making sure people are successful. I have two profiles here. Okay, I'll let you all just have a look at it. Again, snippet from LinkedIn, actual profiles. Now imagine with me one day, you receive a connection request that comes in, okay? Came in from profile one, Alex, and at the same time, you received another, another connection request. This time it came in from Rene. Now if you have to choose one over the other, which one would it be and why? Profile two, I see two, anybody? Okay, let's do this. Those who say profile two, put out your right hand. Right hand, right hand, right hand, right hand. Okay, I see a lot of you all. Profile one, put out your hand. Okay, a few hands. Oh, nobody. Okay, pressure. Ah, lovely. I see one hand there. Again, it's a personal choice. There's no right or wrong way. But most of all preferred profile two, correct? That's quite obvious. Right? It's got a photo, it's got some information in there. And profile one, it's a nice name, Alex. We have Alex here. Uh, but again, it looks a little incomplete. Now, the way you position yourself on the platform really matters. You can choose to be like Alex, or you can choose to be like Rene. It's left to you. The best part about LinkedIn as a platform is you're not letting Another person control it for you. You control it by yourself. I don't know about you, but I really believe in, in literally exhibiting who we are in our true form in the best possible way. When we come to church or when we meet others, we make sure that, you know, we're not like 
getting up from our bed and just walking in straight, right? We're not interacting with people. We make sure that, you know, we freshen up, we look good and presentable. That's exactly what we have to be on the platform as well. So I'm going to be talking about simple ways that we can amplify your brand. Okay? So there are multiple things that you can do on the platform. So I'm going to be focusing on your profile today. Okay? And simple tips that will ensure you have a fancy profile. Like I said, we played the quiz. I said, you put a picture up there, your views go up by 17x. Literally, you're more findable. Some of you will have this question saying that, what kind of picture do I put? A good headshot. Most of us have good smartphones these days. So something that would get us in our true form, put that out there. But again, if you're probably applying for a job or working in an adventure company, you know you can't wear a suit and stand there. They probably might reject you right there, right? But again, the whole intent is try and be relatable to whatever industry you're working for. So that's the first one. Make sure you have a profile picture. Record your name. Now, I don't know how many of you all in this room probably work with folks outside of India. It becomes a little challenging, right, for them, for probably our colleagues and partners that we work with to pronounce our surname sometimes. Have you all got that? Or everybody's got it easy, right? Anyone? Talk to me, people. Yeah? So it's important to also record our name. So there's an option. There's an app on your phone that you can download, the LinkedIn app, and that will give you the ability to record your name so it becomes, it's pronounced the right way. It's important. The third tip that I want to share with you all is industry. Now, I'm sure we have folks working here across industries from medical, IT, technology, and beyond. It's important to tag yourself for the right industry. One, it influences your profile views. But another important aspect is you're more findable. For example, if I belong to a specific industry, I want to find people in that related field, probably to look up and grow, or probably to influence. So it's important to tag yourself for the right industry. If you have this question saying that, I don't know what industry I'm part of. I need some help. Look at what company you're working for. Find out which industry they're part of. It's the easiest way to tag yourself to the right industry. You're with me? Yes? Tired? No? It's a very important piece that I want to talk about is show if you're looking for an opportunity, if you want to look for a new job. Now we have great HR leaders and TA leaders here. <coughs> Excuse me. I know for a fact that sometimes you're worried about if I put open to work, they might get to know. I don't want my boss to know that I'm looking for a change. Yeah? It's probably a small percentage of folks would probably be very vocal on the platform. It's still a personal network, how you want to manage it. But again, you're a little worried about, I don't want people to know that I'm looking for a change. But the best part is, you have two options. You have an option to say that I'm looking for a change on the platform. You will have a green banner against your profile picture. The other piece is, you can avoid that. Still let people know that you're looking for an opportunity. But, you know, you can hide that from your own recruiters. So your recruiters wouldn't know that you're looking for a change. Again, not really spilling the beans, but it's important to do that, especially when you're looking for a change, looking for an opportunity, because there are human resource teams and HR teams, uh, TA teams that are looking at LinkedIn to hire people. So if you're going to letting, let them know about that you're looking for a change, it's good that they can prioritize you all. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Drafting a compelling summary is super important because I think of this like an elevator pitch. So sales folks in the room probably have heard this term called elevator pitch. You know, you get a small window to talk about who you are very quickly to a person that you want to introduce yourself. So it has to be between 40 and 100 words. How many of you all have heard of Chat GPT and Google Bard and so on. Come on, folks. Hands up, hands up, hands up. Yeah, they're great tools. You can actually tap into that, talk a little bit about yourself and say, summarize it, introduce me in about 40 to 100 words. That will do the trick. Now, why is this important? Why is it 40 and 100 words? Because a lot of folks access profiles on their phone. So if they're doing it on the phone, it's important for them to get a quick view of who you are in that one view. 
So if you're going to be writing essays and all of that, you're going to miss out on an opportunity. So again, keep it 1,400 words, but finish it with something that you like to do apart from work. Because again, we are humans, we connect with humans. So if there's something in common between you and the person, there's an instant connection. So what I've done is I've actually put, if I'm not at work, I spend time at home with family, and then I'd like to travel, and I play music. So think about that, and if you are going to make tweaks to your profile, please include one thing that you like to do apart from work. It talks a lot about what you do. Feature content. Now, I'm sure, like Rajiv and Deepa pointed out, all of us are very unique. We bring a special element into this world, right? You know, probably some cook, some probably are into teaching, some into counseling, and so on. And I'm sure in the course of all the years that we have lived, we have small wins, learnings, and so on. You have an opportunity on LinkedIn to actually feature some of them. If you're part of interviews or videos that you're part of or contributed to something very important or celebrated, you have an opportunity to pin them on your profile so that you know, out of all the accolades that you have, you are really proud of these four or five elements, you can call that on on the platform. So use that to your advantage. Detail your work experience. It's important not to really, like Roshan, the worship pastor was here, he says, ha, don't play the humble chord. Have you ever heard the humble chord? No, nothing, it's just downplaying yourself. Like, ah, I don't know anything. No, I'm not that person. No, I mean, all of us have great skills. All of us are unique in our own ways. It's important to actually share who we are and what we do, and there's an opportunity for us to do that. And the best part is, now again, don't write an essay, but try and highlight what are you doing. I'd like to probably help you all connect this. So ask yourself this question. What am I doing there? How can I interpret that in a line or two? What's the impact that I'm bringing to business and so on? Again, if there are like confidential details, don't spill that out there in terms of the number of sales and so numbers. But if there's something that can be publicly displayed, add that to your profile. It goes a long way. Your more findable people get to know who you are a lot better. Career break, okay. It's a topic that is actually taking a lot of limelight these days. Uh, a few years ago, if you say that I'm going to take a career break, people look at you like, oh my gosh, taking a career break, not, not a responsible person. How many of you all who are here have taken a career break? I've done that for six months. Yeah, there are various circumstances. Care, or probably you really needed a break, you wanted to study, it's fine. The beauty of this is the platform and the world around us is changing rapidly and adapting this. There are a lot of organizations that look for people who are on a career break and want to get back to work. So again, there's an opportunity for you to list that out there so people know exactly, <clears throat> rather than finding what's this gap between works, but if you make it quite obvious, it becomes easier for them to understand what that is. So again, there's an opportunity for you to call out career break. Volunteer experience. Now again, this is where the humble card comes again. Uh, a lot of times we tend to like ignore this. No, LinkedIn is all about, you know, what I've done, experience and so on. But you also have an opportunity to talk about some of the activities that you probably volunteer for. CSR initiatives, you would have heard in the corporate term, or ERG groups, or probably doing something outside of work as well, you know, helping out an NGO and so on. List out your volunteer experience. It's the perfect way for you to round off your profile. So make sure you add your volunteer experience. I'm gonna spend a little time here. Skills and getting endorsed. Now, if I don't list out my skills, it becomes very difficult for my connections or people that I'm connected with to know what I do. Yeah, experience would give you an idea, but specific skills, we need to make sure that we tag our skills. So again, there's a way for you to prioritize your skills on LinkedIn. But the best part is last year, LinkedIn launched a feature called assessments, skill assessments. So you have an opportunity, once you list out the skill, you can actually take an assessment free of cost, which is available on the platform. And when you clear the assessment, you get a certificate that gets pinned on your profile. Now again, it's a value assure on your profile. So there are a lot of recruiters these days who also look for people, not just with these skill names, but to see how many of you all completed those skills. So again, an opportunity for us to stand out 
and affirm the skills that we add on our profile. Request a recommendation. Now again, this is the only piece on your profile that you let someone else talk about you. Now, I'm going to ask you all a question here. Okay? How many of you have heard of this term called recommendation on LinkedIn? Again, yes, no, it's absolutely fine. Okay, we see a lot. How many of you all received a recommendation in the last two months? Okay, you see that number went down. I see hardly about three hands that went up. Now again, I know at times, and I've been guilty of this as well, that you ask for recommendation when you're going to be switching jobs. Now I want people to talk about me. I want people to probably add that stamp of, you know, authority saying that, you know, approved, great. But again, I'd say it's an ongoing process. The best way to get recommendations is ask recommendations from your peers, from your leaders, and also probably partners and vendors that you work with. It's important for others to get a perspective of who you are when they look at your profile. Now, a small little tip, especially when you go to your leaders and probably super senior leaders, go with a framework. Go with a preset framework saying that these are some of the areas that I probably or projects that I've initiated and I've probably contributed to. And maybe they can use this framework because, again, a lot of folks in the senior leadership are super busy, right? So go with the framework so it becomes easier for them to give a recommendation on your profile. And last but not least, not to miss out on these important aspects, is don't forget to add your background image. Now, background image is if you go to your LinkedIn profile, you'll find a blue banner there. Yeah, it looks like, you know, just like a, you know, like a blue sky out there. But again, the whole intent is for you to use that space very creatively. Now, for the longest period of time, I was very confusing that how do I use this space? What do I call out? Do I call out maybe initiatives or probably projects or something that I'm probably part of? Yes, you can do that. There's no right or wrong way of doing it. But you can get very creative at this, especially when I was in this phase of connecting with people. I wanted people to get a perception of who I am. Now, I'm a people's person. So in order to portray that, I had a picture of my team there. So again, you can get very creative. If there are organizations that you're part of, you can put that out there as well. So a very creative space for you to use that background image. And the four, you know, probably key areas that you shouldn't miss out is location, education, publications, and accomplishments. I want to stress about location and education. Sometimes, you know, if you don't tag yourself to the right university or college that you pass out from, you could miss out on a lot of goodness. Now, if you tag yourself to the right university, the best part is you can get in touch with some of your colleagues, not colleagues, sorry, your classmates, your seniors, your juniors, very easy to find them, to see where they are at in their life, how they can help you, how you can help them. So if you tag yourself to the right education and you know, you know, university, that's the best way that you can be more findable. Location, and I know for a fact, uh, a lot of times we probably might be supporting another region working out of Bangalore or India. And we might be tempted to say, okay, I'm going to put in, let's say, USA or UK and so on. But tag yourself to the right location. You could call out that you support you know, another region from here. But tagging yourself to the right location ensures that you are findable. Now, all those things that I spoke about till now, team, um, sorry, not team, I say team because I talk to my team quite often, but again, folks here, is to ensure that you have a great profile. And it's important to display ourselves in the right way. Do you all agree with me that you'll need to be in the best outlooking way on, on social media? Yeah? And the best part is we wanted to keep it real as well. Now, we were actually talking about it off, offline, and Jeff and me, we were like just chatting uh, in a bit. And you were sharing how some people probably misuse the platform, right? To probably put in a facade of, uh, you know, looking very probably different from what they are in reality. Uh, now, there's no way to control that. But there are measures that the platform and the folks are taking into account to make sure that the data that you put in is more relevant and true. So again, but at the moment, it's in our hands. And we want to make sure that whatever we do on the platform is true to ourselves and the way we want to be positioned on the platform. I'm going to let you all reflect on two verses in a bit, but I wanted to let you all know about this fun fact. Nine out of 10 organizations use LinkedIn in their recruitment process. So yes, I mean, there's, there's always this thought, right? Okay, it's okay, I'm on other platforms, so I can kind of wing my way through it. But 
again, if you want to be found, especially if you're looking for a change, it's important to make sure that you are on the platform in the best possible way. I'll let you all reflect on these two verses for about a few seconds. And I'm again going to like pick names. Okay, so no eye contact, huh? Folks on the back, be ready. Okay, what's like the theme that comes out from this? Anybody, I'm not going to put, pick names, but anybody wants to say, what's the theme that stands out? Shika says, putting others' need before us. Anybody else? Community and fellowship. Thank you, Alex. Anybody else from this side? Connect? Okay, quite obvious, right? <laughs> but that's true. Anybody else? Any different perspective? Encourage. Absolutely. Now, what we're going to be getting into next is we looked at aspects that will amplify our profile, makes us kind of look good. But we're going to look at a very important element of networking and connecting and putting others first. Now, on the platform, like I said, networking could be for various reasons. I'm looking for a mentor. I'm looking to mentor. I'm looking for a job. I'm looking to promote something. I'm looking to probably just collect information from the platform for my research and so on. There are various reasons why we use LinkedIn and different social media platforms. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the power of connection. But before that, when we're connecting, it involves time. It involves effort. It's not an easy task. Yes, it's pretty simple. It looks like probably it's like, you know, I'm just clicking a button that says connect, and if the person accepts it, it is a connection. But it takes effort. You're willing to give your time. You're willing to give your mind space. You're willing to add your thought. And there's a lot more that it takes from you. So it's important to keep whom you're connecting with you know, in mind. So on LinkedIn, we have this hierarchy of connection called first degree, second degree, and third degree. Okay? How many of you all know what this is? Again, if you all know, I'm glad, I'm glad, a few hands. But I see a lot of you all don't know about this. So I'm going to try and explain this to you, pretty simple. So can I get three volunteers up here? I'm looking at Nirmal, okay, he's like, okay, do I go, do I not go, okay, one, I need two more folks. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you all to sing a song, but, okay, round of applause, everyone. <laughs> one more, one more, one more. Please come. And your name is? Joel, a uh, round of applause. Joseph. Joseph, Joseph, sorry, I got that wrong. Okay, so, do you all want to face them? Okay, so let's presume that Nirmal is first degree connection. Everybody say first degree connection. <laughs> Lovely. Kavita, second degree connection. Kavita, give it up for Kavita. And Joseph is my third degree connection, okay? Okay, look at that screen there and just imagine with me. Now on LinkedIn, if I'm sharing something, okay, what happens is if Nirmal is connected to me, he's called my first degree connection, okay? So whatever I post, whatever I share on the platform, he gets to see that. Now what happens is Nirmal is a very noisy guy. Okay? I'm just kidding. He's a very nice guy. So he likes that comment. And he says, hey, you know, this is what you shared. I like what you shared. He puts that comment. Now what happens is Kavita is connected to Nirmal. But Kavita is not connected to me. Okay? Now because Nirmal connect, you know, commented on my post, Kavita gets to see that. So Kavita is like, hey, this resonates with me. I, I like what, what, what's happening here. So she reacts on that post. Okay? And when Kavita reacts on that post, now Kavita is connected to Joseph. But Joseph is not connected to Nirmal. Joseph is not connected to me. But because Kavita reacted on that post, what happens is Joseph gets to see that. So he's technically my third degree connection. Kavita is my second degree connection and Nirmal is my first degree connection. So this is called the ripple effect. 
that happens. So you have heard of this term that says, oh, a post has gone viral. That's literally how this works. So whatever you post, and we're going to get, that, get into that in a bit, can get viral. So it's important to post things correctly. But again, give it a round of applause for these folks over here. Thank you so much. I hope this helped you all kind of connect the dots somewhere, right? Now we're going to do another activity. Yes, it's after lunch. We're going to do a lot of activities, OK? I'd love for you all to stand up. Ah, yeah, it's very difficult to stand. OK, 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 OK. Now, for the folks who don't have a LinkedIn profile, you can take a seat. You'll have a little homework. You can download the app later. Okay, so I presume all the folks who are standing here has, has a LinkedIn profile, right? Yeah, yeah? Talk back, talk back. Lovely. So we're going to do something fun. If you have less than, you know, 10 connections, if you have just about 10 connections or less than that, you can sit down. Anybody's got less than 10? Okay, 100 connections. So which means anybody with over 100 connections, you still remain standing. Okay? 500 connections. Okay? So if you have over 500 connections, you still can stand. I'm going to come and verify later. <laughs> okay. Let's increase a thousand connections. If you all have thousand, over thousand connections, still remain standing. I see a few folks. Okay, let's push this up even further. 1,500 connections. Wow. Okay, let's push this up. 2,000 connections. So just to clarify, all of you all who are standing have over 2,000 connections. Lovely. Okay, 2,500 connections. Sounds like an auction, huh? 3,000 connections. 4,000 connections, 5,000. OK, so we have three, four, four folks standing. Let's push this up. 7,000 connections. Ah, so we see two folks here. Alex and sir, I didn't get your name. Sunil, OK, a round of applause, folks. <laughs> Influencers. All right. So. How many connections do you have, Alex? 28,000. And Sunil, how many connections do you have? 30,000 plus. Mm, we need to talk, Sunil. <laughs> <laughs> because LinkedIn has a maximum of 30,000 connections. We have a cap at 30,000 connections. But you have followers who are beyond 30,000 connections. So again, the reason why I'm telling you all this is because it's very important if you have a LinkedIn profile or you choose to get onto the platform is to kind of start curating your network. Now, it's not about uh, quantity, but depends. If you are in a profession that needs you all to be connected to a lot more members, you can stay connected. But the beauty of the platform is you can also have followers. Now, you know, if, if there are prominent leaders, you can still choose to have a lot of followers, which means they get to taste a, good, a bit of your goodness in terms of whatever you post and share but you can still kind of manage your network. Network is basically folks that you are connected to personally where you can exchange messages and so on. But it's important to maintain a network that's accessible. Now the questions that you all need to ask is, at this point in time, who are the folks that, are, that matter to me? If everybody matters to you, yes, that helps you solve that easily. But otherwise, ask yourself this question saying that, are folks who are connected to me adding any value to me? And am I adding value to them? Is my time worth it? And am I there that can probably you know, change or make a difference in their lives? It's a very important question, because the moment you have a vast network, it becomes a little difficult to get your message across right. But eventually, you, know that you can grow your network very smartly. Another important aspect that I want you all to know is have a connection criteria. Now, especially, I know for a fact Deepa, Rajiv, you won't be getting hundreds of requests that might come in your way. But, and I'm sure there are a lot of other leaders like Rebecca and there are folks who probably get requests uh, because they're in the TA world and, and prominent leaders and a lot more. Ratna, I'm sure. 
keep getting a lot of connections that might come your way. It's important to, to kind of build your own connection criteria. And for the folks on, in this room as well, you know, create, have this saying that, like, think of it like a, like a cloud uh, formula, per se. So basically saying that if people match these criteria, then I'll accept it. Otherwise, the people who have reached out to you all, saying that I want to connect with you all on LinkedIn, they can still follow you all. So just letting you all know that they wouldn't miss out on the goodness that you share. The other important fact that I want to share with you all is whatever you're posting is on the platform till you delete it. Now, there are some certain rules and conditions, terms and conditions, in case you violate something that the post will be taken down. But apart from that, you know, you get to control the visibility of your post. For example, when I'm posting something, I can choose whether my content is just visible to my first degree connections. You remember the first degree, second degree connections? I can choose that or make it open for everyone, which means everyone can probably take a piece of what was shared. And for the folks who are probably you know, in this space saying that I'm an introvert, I have a platform, I'm, it's fine if people send a connection request to me, it's okay. I don't know how to go and network, how do I connect? So to make things easier for you all, there's an AI feature on the platform. So when you're on LinkedIn, I'm gonna skip this. When you're on LinkedIn, when you click on My Networks tab, it says discover your existing connection. So you'll actually find friends and family, current and former colleagues, current and former managers there that would show up. We're gonna do an activity towards the end, but it will be around this whole aspect of connection. So if you don't know where to start, you can start right here. You'll have recommendations that would come in, which will just make it easier for you all to connect. How many of you all here like sharing content on any social media platform? Quite a bit, right? And I'm sure the others, you all probably share, not, not very frequently. But on LinkedIn, you have the opportunity to share content in two different forms, updates and publishing. So updates are nothing but short form, texts that go out. Publishing much more detail on a specific topic. And I'm gonna be talking about some best practices. So in case you really wanna know, how do I make sure that I use the platform in the best possible way, is first think about your audience. You remember I spoke about connections? It's important to ask, you know, what does my audience care about? The second aspect that I want you all to do is share your authentic voice. Yes, some of you all, or us I would say, I use a lot of chat GPT and, and BARD, is to make sure that our voice is not diluted or changed. So make sure it's authentic and very true to who you are. Post frequently. Now I, I wanna confess that I've been struggling with this post frequently piece. Now it's not always that you need to share and create your own content. Sometimes you can also, probably, you know, if you come across an article, you can also reshare that. And most of us, if we are working in an organization, and some of us who probably own our own firms, you know there are probably job opportunities. That's the best way that you can actually share content if you're struggling to share. So just share that job on the platform. It becomes easier for someone in your network, or if it becomes viral, someone to tap into that opportunity. And how do I make sure that I post frequent? Because frequent posting is very subjective, right? For me, maybe it's like weekly. For Ashwin, probably it's daily. And for some of you all, it might be a very different time frame that you operate in. But the best way that you can tap into free, frequent posting is to add that to one of your chores that you do. And the best way is, I kind of do a little bit of, you know, uh, especially in, in, in my guitar, I tend to try and polish it once a week and try to maintain it a little bit. And I decided that day, I'll also post something intentionally on the platform on LinkedIn because I've connected it with that activity. That's an activity that I do once a week. And I started there, became more frequent. So like that, maybe identify a chore that you do already and club this activity with them. So the moment you do that chore, you know exactly, hey, now I probably need to share something on the platform. So it can be something that you create or even reshare something that's already there. This is a very simple tip that I wanna share with you all is start a conversation. Many times we share content and we're like, oh gosh, I don't get likes. I don't get comments. I'm gonna to get to that in a bit. But share, continue to share. And sometimes when you share, ask people for their point of view. Ask them for their opinion. For example, let's say that I'm picking a topic today. I'm talking about connection. 
connecting with purpose, purposeful connection. And I share my three, four lines on that. And I'd love to invite my audience to say, hey, or my connections say, I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. And I'm sure they would probably add a line or two. So it's important to make it conversational rather than just pushing content. So it becomes more engaging for your audience. This is a secret tip that I want to share with you all. If you're sharing content, make sure there's a media, and I say media, photo, image, or uh, video. Those pieces get a lot more eyeballs on it. So if you've spent a lot of time creating that content, I know it's a lot of hard work sometimes, but make sure you take that extra few seconds to maybe associate it with an image. It goes a long, long way. And the last tip that I want to share is create an opportunity for them to reciprocate. Now, don't say that, okay, this is like, I'm going to add one small little note saying that copyright. It is important to have that copyright, yes. Uh, if people are going to be using your content, they need to ask your permission. That's uh, quite, quite respectful. Uh, but again, invite people to, you know, maybe reshare content and have them probably add their own value or two cents to it. So again, simple best practices, especially if you're trying to struggle or you don't know where to start, this should help you directionally in the right direction. Now this question that I keep getting often, okay, Eddie, you know what, I have a great profile and I've built my network over time. And I'm also starting to post content. You know, but is that all? Am I doing it all right? There's always scope to get better. Now I actually told my friend saying that, it's like you have this fancy car that you bought, but you've locked it up in the garage, you're not really taking it out. Now, if you don't do anything with your profile, it's pretty much like that locked up Ferrari. So it's important to actually take our you know, connection and our expertise on the platform. So here again are simple things that you can do. Very practical, it doesn't really require a lot of time and effort. But one is invest your time in connecting with people and request informational interviews. So when I say request informational interviews, again, for the folks who are probably five, six years working in the corporate terms, and I know that you want to take this as a next step, it's a great way for you to connect with industry leaders on the platform and just connect with them and say, can you give me your time to, I want to know more about you. It kind of helped me a lot as well. When I was a budding customer success manager, I wanted to like shift my gears into you know, managing much more complicated books of business and so on. And I, I decided to kind of connect with a lot of industry leaders in this space saying that, I just want to talk to you all in terms of what are you working on, what are you working with, some of the tools that you probably know and, and use frequently. Similarly, I'm sure there are a lot of leaders here who probably have some time. If you all are willing to probably mentor, put that note out there. If there are a lot of budding folks who probably want to tap into some of your expertise and learn from you. So, that's an important aspect. Go ahead and connect with people. The second aspect that I want to talk about is like and share. I know you would have heard this from a lot of YouTubers say like, share, subscribe, right? A very common term. But again, uh, like posts. So sometimes I know you're probably having a busy day, but you've, you scroll through LinkedIn, you've come across certain pieces. In your mind, you've liked it, but physically go ahead and like it as well. Again, you never know how that can go viral. If there's a job opportunity or something, you like it, it tends to get viral. And then share content and comment as well. So do that. That's the least that we can do. Probably takes about a few seconds. The third aspect that I want to talk, you, talk to you all about is join groups and engage and exchange views. Now, there are groups on LinkedIn. Again, a great, great opportunity for you to tap into that and join groups that are probably sharing expertise in terms of some of the areas that you matter to you. If, if, if creativity or probably digital you know, uh, marketing is an important factor. Look for groups in the search bar on LinkedIn. You can just type in digital marketing, Bangalore. You'll find groups that would pop up. Join them. Contribute to them. You never know how, what world of a difference that you can make. And the last tip that I want to share with you all is don't shy away from asking for recommendations, one. as something that I spoke about. But also give recommendations proactively. If you feel someone's really added value, go ahead and put that out there. It, it adds a lot of value to whomever you're going to be adding that recommendation to. This, we're going to get a little more tactical. Now, I'm sure all of us have our dream organizations, right? Anybody here who says, no, I, I don't believe in all of that. I'm sure all of us prefer certain organizations, right? Follow them on LinkedIn. It's important because when you do that, people get, you get an idea of what's it like working in that organization. You get to know a little bit about the culture, 
some of the job opportunities and so on. So if you don't do that, you're missing out on an important element. Follow leaders. Like I said, uh, LinkedIn has a maximum of 30,000 connections, uh, but you can still choose to follow leaders. So if there are leaders that you want to follow so that you get to know a little bit of what they share, don't miss out on those opportunities, follow leaders. It's important to do that. And this is how the advanced search feature looks. So on LinkedIn, there's a search bar. You can go ahead and key in whatever you want. Use it like that, you know, like your generative AI, like your BARD or a chat GPT. Go ahead and type in. Let's say today I'm like, okay, I'm looking at human resource leaders in Chennai. I go type that out there, and you have a way to filter that down, go into advanced searches, and find those people that matter to you. If it's a job that you're looking for, I'm going to get to that in a bit. But you can use this search bar in a very creative way to arrive at a desired result. Now I want to spend the last few minutes talking a little bit about how do I use the platform to probably get my next play, or join, or look for an opportunity. Like I said, there's a cool feature that says open to work. But I'm going to talk to you about what happens behind the scenes. Now when you put open to work on your profile, recruiters on the back end, they have access to a tool. Again, it's an extension of LinkedIn. It's called LinkedIn Recruiter. And they go ahead and look for people who are open to work. Because again, faster turnaround on time, right? For them as TA folks, one of the key factors is, how do I hire someone very quickly? And when you make it open to work, it becomes easy for them to tap into that. So don't miss this out. It's a very important factor and feature to tap into it. The other aspect is it also gives you the opportunity to search for career opportunities. Like I said, that search bar, you remember everyone? Go ahead and type in what you like, and you'll find jobs that probably matter to you. And the best part is the tool has a bit of machine learning and AI. Based on the frequency and the way you search, the tool will also recommend jobs to you. So if you go to my job bar on LinkedIn, you'll find a lot of customer success or account management roles that will actually pop up there, saying that, why don't you consider this? So the tool will learn from you. So only when you use the tool, at least, at least once a week, you'll kind of get an idea of what the tool is also suggesting to you, saying that, why don't you consider these jobs? I think it matches with your profile. It matches with the skills that you have. Why don't you consider applying or probably pursuing it? And the last piece is we're going to get in a small little activity called connection. So I want you all to pick out your phones. If you have the app on your phone, nothing like it. But otherwise, you can go to your LinkedIn. You go to your browser, type in LinkedIn.com. I hope you remember your passwords, because a lot of questions that I keep getting is, I don't know what my LinkedIn password is. But it's OK. If you can hit forget password and reset it. We're going to do a little activity right now. OK? So I'm, I have a timer here that I've just set up for about 90 seconds. And then we're going to do a small little activity. If you want to do download the platform later, it's absolutely fine. But if you all can do it, we're going to do a little activity that will help you all get that connection started right here. Those of you all who are already on the platform, already on the app, just give me a thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Oh, I already see a lot of hands. We'll give it about 30 more seconds, just so that everybody gets an opportunity to take part in this activity. I see some of you all are logging into LinkedIn for a, for a very long time. OK, I'm assuming that most of you are already on the platform. So there's a tab called My, my, my Network. So click on that. Click on My Network. And the moment you do that, when you scroll down on that page, you'll actually find a ton of recommendations to you, connection recommendations. That's the easiest way to begin your connection journey. The other thing that I want you all to do is, on each table, you probably have friends, colleagues, or probably you know, folks that you're meeting for the first time. Connect with them. See if they're on LinkedIn. Ask them what their name is, and connect with them. Again, a simple way for you to begin your journey in connecting. So I'll give this about 30 seconds. 
and then I'll quickly recap what we did today. Now this is the cue for you all to talk to each other and ask. So when, when you'll get, you know, probably, uh, you know, a few free minutes during your day or during the week, go to your My Network tab, and then when you scroll down, you'll have recommendations coming to you. And sometimes you'll be surprised, you'll be seeing probably former colleagues, classmates, schoolmates, and so on. It's a great way for you to, op you know, an, an opportunity for you to connect with them and contribute and add to their life, and likewise, also reciprocate, get from them. All right, all right. I'd love to draw your attention, everyone. A quick recap. Attention, everyone. Okay, so just to kind of recap, building your brand is in your own hands. You can't outsource that to someone else. The way you position yourself in real life, on the platform, on any professional network or on any network really matters because we represent royalty. All of us are sons and daughters of the Most High. They all believe in that. Yeah? I can't get it. That's not convincing enough. Yeah? Now, keep in mind, yes, we are royalty. We are true sons and daughters of the Most High. We are called. Anybody's got doubt in there? Yeah, all of us, right? So, it's important that we position and we portray ourselves in our true form, in the right way, on any social media platform and in our real life. And it matters. The second aspect, we spend a little time developing our own profile. So th there were tips that were shared. If you'd like to know more about it, you can just go to Google, type in LinkedIn profile builder, and it'll help you pretty much match those, or probably help you fill those gaps. The third aspect is go ahead and use the platform to share. Share content, share things that matter to you, share jobs that you're probably, uh, you know, the, from the organization that you're part of, or probably from your own organization. And then follow companies and leaders that will help you all in your journey. So with that, I will give you all back time, but again, I'm open for questions. So if there are any questions, we're gonna move the mics around, so I'm more than happy to answer. So with that, thank you, everyone. Can we get a mic? Uh, I think Shikha's got a question. Thank you. Um, thanks, Eddie, for the great session. Uh, I had two questions, actually. Um, I have recently made my profile private. I don't know how that affects people connecting to me, because they can't really see my profile picture. I did that because a lot of random people who were not really in my profession were sending me requests. And the second question is, usually when I repost, I don't repost with my own thoughts. And um, if I know that may not be as effective as posting uh, original content, but how does that affect when you, I'm just reposting without my thoughts? So those are the two questions that I have. Is that clear? Absolutely, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. So the, the beauty of the platform is, that's a great question. Shika had, you know, just to kind of help you all, uh, you know, just rephrase what she asked was, one is, if I've cho chosen to make my profile private, which means I don't really display my picture, only folks who are connected to me get to see my picture, okay? so. It can be controlled if you feel that I don't want people who are not connected with me not to get everything that's there on my profile other than my name. That's doable. That, from a visibility perspective, yes, it does have an impact because, like I said, if there's a picture, there's more connection requests that would come in. But from a privacy standpoint, the beauty of this is it's left to each individual to kind of control that. So I would say it does impact but if people want to find you, they know your name and the organization and the skills that are there on your profile, that is still accessible. So which means people can still find you, maybe slightly uh, less effective than ones with the picture. So you're not missing out on a lot. On the other aspect, uh, in terms of if I'm just sharing content uh, or someone else's article just like that without adding my sense, it's absolutely fine. Uh, the whole intent of 
adding your voice to it is to add your perspective and what do you think about that post and and especially think of it like this if this my connections that i have and if i'm sharing content yes people are looking at it but if i'm sharing something that i like probably add my two cents to it the folks who know me will probably want to know what i'm actually saying about that so that kind of makes a difference and probably people you know pay a lot more attention to that so think of it like this now it's let's say uh, our own probably family right we're talking about uh, family are the ones who who probably be pretty brutally honest with us and friends as well so sometimes when we're sharing something uh, maybe it's a song that you created i'm i'm talking from that perspective maybe it's quite unique they'll be pretty brutal with you on think that it's good it's bad no nah, it's 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 that so especially this when there's something coming out from you uh, i'm sure your connections who matter to you uh, will pay attention to it so that's the only things but again from a reach perspective that's not tweaked at all uh, the algorithm kind of works similarly whether you add a send uh, add two lines to it or not so that's my my take on that So Edwin, if we were to choose that open to work, you know, option, there's a flip side to it, right? Like um, organizations would take note of it. What if my boss sees it that this guy is open to work, right? That's that's. So that's, doesn't it indicate uh, a bit of disengagement with your current, you know, organization? Would it would it have a impact on, uh, you know, the person who has chosen that option? And also, there are recruiters who don't actively pursue people who are in the job market, right? They want someone. who is not uh, you know looking for a change thank you for asking that uh, and i'm sure that there's a question that probably is behind uh, all of our minds or at least most of our minds uh, i did kind of address that little bit but let me get into it a little deeper so when i'm putting open to work on my profile i get to choose the visibility of that so immediately there are two options one is you have that green banner that you will see against photos or your profile picture that's like open to everyone everybody gets to know that i'm open to work the other aspect is i can choose to be open to work and it says hide this from my own recruiters and my own company folks so uh, you know it's it's difficult for people to find out whether you're open to work in that fashion the other aspect is like i said recruiters uh, you know in in terms uh, you know don't go after profiles or because of the job market at the moment i can talk yes it's definitely a difficult period across industries but it is recovering it's getting better over time we were just having a chat about that david and i uh it is getting better and from that front there are recruiters like i said 9 out of 10 recruiters use what we call as linkedin recruiter on the back end which is connected to linkedin so whatever you put here recruiters are actually pulling on their data for example let's say if i am a data scientist and i've put abc on my profile and if i'm a recruiter i'm looking for data scientist and if i haven't mentioned all these on my profile i'm using the tool searching for data scientist but i'm not finding this person show up that's purely because what what's on my profile but if i have a profile with all these information that gets extracted on the back end and trust me recruiters are looking for folks you know uh with niche skills with with even common skills but the platform is used quite effectively like 9 out of 10 they have embedded this uh, using linkedin in their recruitment process to look for people so again uh, it's it's quite important on that front uh hi edwin thanks uh, it was a very informative session i think one aspect you forgot to probably talk about or maybe it was deliberate is premium uh, so my question i mean uh is uh more in terms of a personal experience that i had so my wife uh, explored the the first month trial and probably another month of paid all right uh, so in terms of uh, finding opportunities the level of insight she got into each role possible opening was better right because you're paying but uh, it didn't kind of like fructify into um, inbound requests which we kind of uh, presumed it would uh, could you touch upon that and yeah um, what else does premium kind of how can we leverage premium if we sign up for a subscription yeah Thanks. great question thank you for bringing that up now i'll, prob I'll probably set the ground rule here i mean uh, to be honest i i wouldn't talk good about premium or bad about premium uh, to be honest is 
There's no control over the premium product of LinkedIn. Some of you all probably have seen this thing, the Tri Premium. It's, it's an online product by itself. It's got, it got its own advantages and disadvantages. But the first thing that I want to like, show you all, talk about is LinkedIn uh, as, a, as, a, as, as a company is actually first a networking company. The whole purpose is to connect with people. And then the byproduct of that is also connect people with opportunities specifically. So from a premium perspective, there are a few advantages to it. And I think top three that to my mind is, yes, it gives you visibility into certain companies uh, in terms of insights about that. It gives you in-mails. Basically, you can send a message to anyone, about five members, and if they reciprocate, if they answer, you get that credit back. I think there are about five credits every month. And then you get, you can tap into learning opportunities. Basically, there are some great content from a learning perspective that's there. Now, in terms of whether my profile will be more visible and attract jobs, that is never the reason why premium was made specifically. Uh, so I hope that answered you to an extent. However, like what I just spoke about previously when I was sharing this example with, you know, from, with, with Alex, like if you have data or all the necessary information on your profile and that is quite, uh, you know, your, your profile is quite informative in that front. If there's a job that's posted, that would land in front of this candidate purely based on the skills that's there on their profile and their preference specifically. So in the other front is to position yourself for someone to reach you, make sure you, your profile is attractive enough to attract opportunities to you. That's one aspect. So when I say attract, there are two facets to it. One is this AI recommendations of jobs that will land up under your job section. The other aspect is recruiters reaching out to you. Now recruiters will look for people with specific skills. So that's the only aspect. Again, I'm not dissing the fact that premium is, is no good. There are definitely advantages of how you want to use it. But like I highlighted, these are the three aspects of how you can use premium. Great. Any other questions from anyone? Yes. yes. Uh, my question is like, uh, with respect to uh, posting on uh, LinkedIn, so with the rise of uh, AI tools like ChatGPT. So let, let's say someone who, who posts using ChatGPT and someone who, we know that it takes a lot of effort to you know, build content. Like you have to think through an idea and write down content and in a way that it is easily digestible by people. And there is someone who uses ChatGPT and kind of can come up with much better English. Um, for example, if I take, let's say, uh, top 12 tricks in new release of Python 12, 3.12, so if I do, I have to do a research and I have to put it point by point. But there'll be someone, other guy who could just say, uh, hey, can you give me uh, tips and tricks of the latest Python release? So his content would be much better uh, in terms of the way he puts, because uh, it's less likely that I'll be able to beat ChatGPT when it comes to creating or form formulating a sentence. So does uh, personal content writing with so much of effort <coughs> add any advantage or it's just, you know, just an effort to... <laughs> Uh, secondly, secondly, uh, I think these two questions could be integrated. Uh, secondly, we have influencers or people with large amount of followers in LinkedIn, uh, especially in, when it comes to tech. Likewise, in other social platforms like Facebook or uh, Instagram, we do have followers, uh, we do have people who are called influencers and they have tons of followers. The advantage they have over those platforms is they can monetize their uh, you know, uh, content and they get to earn something, like probably some, or some of them are making good money. Is there something of that sort in LinkedIn or not yet? That's a very, that's a very good question. Um, talking about, hey, hey, check, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, great. Not through mic, but yeah. <laughs> oh, my, love, my voice is quite loud. I think the battery is down on this, Jeff. Can you hear me? Okay. C can I pass on my mic to you? Hey, 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 check, check, test. Ah, oh, it's good, it's back. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff said that it's going to mute me here and there. Jeff, you kept your word. <laughs> but yeah, so talking a little bit about uh, the two pieces. Now, I'm not an expert, uh, but I can talk a little bit about the conversations that I've had with certain content creators. You can sit down. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, so I actually, I had this question uh, with regard to you know when ChatGPT and Bart came out. Uh, I reached out to a few friends and, and members in church as well, great content creators, saying that, hey, like, how is it? Is it difficult right now? Because now 
you know, even if I don't know that topic, I can actually write a page about it. How is it like, does it like really scare you? And the answer that came in was not at all. They were like, no, it's, it's still not the way we write. The creative element is, is not there in that. Yes, it looks, might look very nice and so on, but you actually ask some of the ardent readers here, they'll probably tell you saying that, no, it still can't replace that human touch. That's one aspect to it. That's just what I've heard. I'm not an expert there. However, the principles of posting content or best practices that I shared still remains true. So you remember what I said, that the first one right on top is share your authentic voice. So it doesn't matter how it has to be, but again, if it's true to you, because your audience would have, again, be accustomed to what you're going to be sharing. And imagine a world of a difference, suddenly they know exactly, okay, this person is using some, you know, tools. And that's absolutely fine. I'd say, get a little smarter about it. Yes, if this is what I want to do, you and I have access to this. How do I probably enhance it? If there's something that I already have, I wouldn't replace that, but I look for opportunities to enhance it. So that's how I would tap into it. And again, it's just uh, my point of view on that. On the other front, how can I monetize? Uh, so, like I said, it, it was never in LinkedIn's DNA to monetize people's content or give them, you know, like every member needs to have a subscription. I don't know about Twitter for a fact that now they're thinking about making every user pay for it before accessing the platform. Uh, but again, that was never the intent or reason why uh, the platform was created in the first place. Uh, about monetizing content, eventually if it gets a lot of likes and visibility, I don't know. I don't think that's in the roadmap in the near future. Uh, but, but again, if, if it is gonna happen, it's gonna be all over the news for sure in that front. But however, there are products, uh, LinkedIn does monetize. There are specific solutions, uh, like for example, like your recruiters would use the tool to identify talent. Sales folks in the room would probably know, there's a sales navigator tool, and uh, from the learning and development, there's LinkedIn learning, and also marketing solutions. People use that to market content to relevant audience. So there are ways that the platform uses the, you know, to kind of monetize and get uh, revenue coming in, uh, but not from you know, every member's post specifically at the moment. I hope that helped you directionally. Perfect, that answers my question. Yeah. Thank you. I think, the, oh. And thank you, thank you everyone.